Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. Throughout the years, we have seen the rise and fall of many handgun rounds in particular. Rifle rounds have longer staying power. You know, people get their rifle rounds, they will keep, hunt, and shoot those for years. But handgun rounds, they kind of come and go. If you look at the 45 GAP, at one point, people wondered, will this replace the 45 ACP? It's got a shorter case, it's a high pressure round. Maybe this has what it takes, but it didn't really do well, and, and now you never even hear of it. You look at 357 SIG, you know, it, this has stronger ballistics than the 40 Smith & Wesson. It, it uses a similar case, but it's a bottleneck round. Maybe this is the way to go, but it was so expensive that it it just consumed too much of people's budget. You look at the 32 ACP, you know, you never see a new release, or seldom, I can't remember in a while, seeing a new release in... 32 ACP, and you could throw 32 NAA in there outside of North American Arms. I don't know that anybody makes a, a handgun with the 32 NAA. And while we're at it, you could throw in the 40 Smith & Wesson. I haven't seen a new release chambered in 40. Actually, I've seen many manufacturers cut down their 40 Smith & Wesson line. And others like CZ just completely eliminate it. But the round I'm talking today had a, a, a interesting history. It was rather dormant for a while and then it rose in popularity in the last couple of years it really shot up there but i think it's on its way down again and i'm going to explain why and what we're talking about is the 5.7 by 28 millimeter i love this round it's it's loud it's fast it's low recoil and if you think back it was introduced back in 89 primarily from fn and they had the 5.7 pistol, and the P90. And if you wanted to shoot this round, you were pretty much committed to FN and the, the 5.7. And, and the P90, you know, that, that was the, the route to go. It began testing in the early 2000s, and it has since made its way through so many law enforcement and military militaries throughout the world. And... People love it, and FN had done very well. And there was a time when FN only produced the ammo. Either they, it was branded FN and produced by somewhere else, but FN was the only one. But in 2012, Federal started making the 5.7 by 28 millimeter. And they got into it, and it actually dropped the cost, which was good because the 50-round boxes of FN were expensive it, it just wasn't mass produced now you're starting to see more of that and when federal jumps in the game then you know it's probably going to sell well and it did for a while and the reason it took off remember i call this the rise and the fall the reason it took off is when ruger released the ruger 57 in 2019 that brought this round back on the map prior to that it was proprietary with FN products, and they were very expensive. You're looking at two grand for a P90, and you're looking at around twelve hundred for the FN 5.7. So, when Ruger came out with the Ruger 5.7 for seven hundred bucks, people were like, "Now I'm interested. Now I could. Now I could do that." Over here is the Diamondback DBX 5.7, right? Yeah. They they released this soon after Ruger did, and that too open people's eyes. You look at the CMMG Banshee. I own this. It's it's a great 5-inch barrel sub gun chambered in 5.7 by 28 millimeter. And then you look at others. Palmel State Armory with the Rock at 5.7 by 28 millimeter. It drove a lot of attention to Chacho. And then kel came out with the P50. And what? 5.7 by 28 millimeter. So people started talking about it people started getting involved reviewers started reviewing it and uh, excitement just seemed to flourish with this round and for the most part it was affordable now here's where the fall comes in it no longer became affordable this box here you're not going to find this or <laughs> i struggle with that because you know, I live where I live, you live where you live, but I never see this at a gun store. So you are pretty much committed to picking this up online. Now, when you have a firearm that shoots a specific round like this, you're committed to online buying, and therefore your price instantly increases. 
during the ammo crisis that we've experienced the last three and a half years, in the midst of it, this was selling for a dollar a round. So this box here was 50 bucks. That took people out of the game. They they were no longer interested so much because of the price. And, and that, that's what happened to 357 SIG. If 357 SIG wasn't so expensive, you would see more people shooting it to this day, including yours truly. I, I had a, a, a Glock in 357 SIG and loved it. I just didn't want to pay the ammo cost. So let's take a look at that. Currently, you can pick this up on the low end for $0.62 cents around. All right. And that would equal about 32 bucks a box. Okay, that's at least a little bit doable. It's really expensive, you know, but whatever. If you love the round, you love the round, you're willing to pay for it. But when you consider the tax, the shipping, that 32 bucks a box all of a sudden turns into $45 a box. $45 a box. Now, let me tell you something. For those who have never shot 5.7 by 28 millimeter, it goes quick because it's low recoil. If you think about you, you shoot a 22 long rifle faster than you do your 45 ACP, let's just face it. Like it's pop pow, pop pow, pop pow, pop pow, because you don't worry about it. It's low recoil. You stay on target. You get the same effect here. Now, the ballistic performance of this is far superior than, than many handgun rounds. I want to show you when I shot, I took four shots at this. Landscape, landscape brick. I want to show you that right now. Check that out. There's a total of four shots, and there's the hairline crack I could see. Out of that Ruger 5.7, using this round right here, it was traveling at 1,600 feet per second. That is fast. That's, I would guess, about 30% faster than your standard 9mm, and these are target loads. Now, if you get the Hornady VMAX rounds, those will travel at 2,350 feet per second. That is fast. And it still maintains low recoil. Now, this is a 40-grain bullet. Those are, the, the Hornady VMAXs are 31-grain bullets. So, you have a lighter bullet. It's going to move faster. It's a center-fired round bottleneck that is low recoil. And, and people love it. I think it's great. And I love this DBX. I love the, the Banshee. I love the 5.7 by Ruger. And the fact that is that you have more firearms to choose from these days, which really saw an increase in the manufacturers who are producing these and in the sales of ammo. But now a $32 box is going to cost you $45. You're looking at the difference of after shipping and taxes of an additional 28 cents per round or $32 a box versus $45 a box. That's, that's what I call the fall. I don't know if this is going to come back. When you see ammo manufacturers during an ammo crunch and they have to prioritize, you, you see what they are prioritizing. They are going after your common handgun round. You're looking at the 9, the 45, the 380s, and the 22 long rifles. You know, that that's what they're going after. Is it worth it, or, or, you know, to, to, to take all those resources and put it into 5.7 by 28 millimeter when you have a smaller pool of shooters that are desiring this round? I don't know. It's, it boils down to economics and what's selling and what's available. Now, the good news is the availability has come back online, which tells me they are producing it. The bad news is the price is still elevated. It would be so nice if you could pick this up at your local gun store. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Whether it's this, the Hornady, the FN boxes, I've never seen it. You're committed to online purchasing, and that will raise your prices, and that will keep you away from this round at the range. And that's why I'm saying... The rise was substantial, it's falling now, and it's the price of ammo, and if you ever want to see a, a handgun round die, increase the price of ammo substantially, put it out of people's budgets, and you will see that thing die, and I'm thinking that's what's happening right now with the 5.7 by 28 millimeter. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, and you guys be safe.